welcome to Agriculture in the Classroom. My name is Chelsea Foley and I'm the Agriculture in the Classroom coordinator here in Newfoundland and Labrador. We're going to learn a little bit in this series about what's happening in the agriculture industry across the province. But first, you need to know a little bit more about what Agriculture in the Classroom Newfoundland and Labrador does. So the first video we're going to watch is a little bit more about Agriculture in the Classroom Newfoundland and Labrador programs such as Little Green Thumbs and Little Green Sprouts. Agriculture in the Classroom Newfoundland and Labrador's vision is to connect youth to agriculture through education. Agriculture in the Classroom programs help increase their awareness of where food comes from, how it is grown, the environmental impacts and understanding of why our food system is essential to society. There are many ways that youth learn from AITCNL programs, such as Little Green Thumbs and Little Green Sprouts Gardens, vermicomposting, literacy initiatives, culinary sessions, in-class visits from farmers and agriculture professionals, farm tours, and much more. The children learn so much about food and where it comes from. You know, from the simple process of planting a seed, even receiving the seed and seeing how different the seeds look like. Planting them, nurturing them, and see what it takes for a seed to thrive. In the classroom, you'll see children are making sure that they're trying to eat the foods that they have for their recess and lunches, um, not wasting what they have. And then what's compostable, they're ensuring that it goes into the compost and not into the garbage can. Students learn all about the different facets of agriculture and how our food is produced, from planting and growing fruits and vegetables with their classroom gardens, to composting and how the organic waste we create can be recycled into fertilizer. We have created a myriad of children's books so that students can be engaged in learning from the comfort of their own classrooms and we host and attend events to promote agriculture in the community. Agriculture in the Classroom Newfoundland and Labrador provides students with an inclusive, hands-on and inquiry-based program right in their classroom. Some children, they go to a supermarket and they think everything is grown in the supermarket. Our children at St. Matthew's know where food is grown and I think they have a much greater appreciation. All children are engaged and motivated uh, by seeing the garden in their classroom, by planting seeds, by having their hands in the soil, by watching the seeds sprout and grow. All children change, uh, they become calmer, um, they are engaged, they are intrinsically motivated um, to, to help one another and to uh, be kind and be careful and to show love and respect towards the plants and then I see that transferring towards the students that are shoulder to shoulder with them around the garden. We love little green thumbs! So that was a little bit more about agriculture in the classroom Newfoundland and Labrador. So the next video we're going to be showing you is about technology in agriculture. You might not think that there's a lot of modern technology being used in agriculture in this province. However, the next four farmers are going to show us why there is technology being used on their farm. It helps increase productivity and protects the environment and helps the farmers with their labor. So we're going to be talking to Jeff Peddle, Rodney Reed, Rebecca Williams, and Eden Richardson. In my facility, the cows get milked with a uh, Bomatic robot. It's an automated milking system, so cows milk 24 hours a day. When the cow goes into the automated system, into the robot, it gets scanned so it knows that that cow is due to be milked. The cow is, is accessed every six hours, so if that cow is accessed to be milked, it, the arm comes out, there's two cameras, there's a 2D, a 3D camera, and it scans with a laser, and then it washes the udder, preps the cow, and then it starts to attach the milkers one by one. And when the cow is finished milked, it retracts the milkers, it uh, recleans the udder, and then the cow leaves. It also gets, depending on the cow and how much milk she's making, it also balances her diet through grain. So while the cow is getting milk, the, the robot is actually dropping grain for that cow to eat. With cow health, like there's a tagging system that uh, all cows are tagged for traceability, tracking purposes, and with the robot as well, um, that tag is that tag is also centered with a transponder for each cow. So when that cow enters the robot, it knows that cow is in there. It monitors her motion for that day, how much milk, everything she gives. And by using all those parameters, it sort of builds a history on that cow. And if something changes, if there's a deviation in milk production, deviation in their activity, it can, uh, it's a very good tool for you to target a specific cow in order to determine, okay, is that cow sick or is she just having an off day? It's a good technology in my opinion. It, uh, it frees up the dairy farmer's time. If cows weren't tagged individually for, for traceability and identification purposes, it is possible to be able to monitor your herd without the tagging system, but it makes it much more difficult. With the tagging system 
Uh, it helps you monitor your herd because every cow is tagged individually and you can reference that tag number. Like I have a laptop with a management software, so you can reference those tag numbers on there, look at the cow history at a click of a button. So the, you know, the traceability through the tagging system is uh, it's a great tool used on a dairy farm. So some technology we use on the farm um, are milkers. So these automatically come off, we attach them to the cow, and then uh, when the cow is finished milking, it comes right off. Some other technology we have is our computer system. One of the most important things on farm is actually my phone. The data that's on my phone uh, collaborates with the data that's on our computer, which also connects with the cows that are in the barn and their air tag. That can help me tell if a cow is sick. It gives me some information on her so I can go back and check her out fully on our computer um, to know her health record. So there's actually a cow I'm concerned about right now, so let's go check her out. Fourteen sixty four is the cow that um, I came to check on. She hasn't been quite as active in the herd as we'd like to see, not moving around as much. Um, the number that we identify her as is the big number on her tag. You'll also see that she has a smaller number, and that's her national number, so kind of like her social insurance number. Um, every cow has one of each number, the big one and the small one, and that helps us identify them in the herd and nationally. We have all the information we need on 1464. Um, the information we have is her age, so she's five years old and four months. She's had four babies. She's currently giving 91 pounds of milk, which is about uh, 40 to 50 liters. With this information, such as her calving date, we can tell that she was recently sick after she had her baby. So right now she's still recovering from being sick previously. Now, let's take a look at what technology is used on a sheep farm. The main technology we use for farming sheep is the handling system that we have um, and with that we have an animal production software program uh, that all the information of the sheep goes into that and we get to use a RFID tag reader so every sheep has a uh, electronic tag and that machine communicates with the main database and with that we can go through all the animals and it does the history of the animal, who they are how much they weigh, we, we've seen them last, or if there's any animal conditions or anything we have to do. So this piece of technology here is a uh, tag reader. So this records the microchip that every animal has in its ear tag, and it communicates through Bluetooth or through wireless with the other, the other system and our computer in the office. And I can go over to an animal and just press the trigger and it records its number. So I can just go right over here and lay it in and the number comes up here automatically of who it is. So here the, the handheld is, is uh, communicating with the database and we can weigh everyone individually. So right here this is where her tag number is that comes up. This is her current weight. Uh, I recorded here as her live weight. Under her life data this comes up right now her current average daily gain is only 0 0.01 of a kg and overall it's 0 0.02 of a kg. It really helps us keep our numbers straight and who's who um, and without having to have the human error of writing down a lot on paper um, because it gets very complicated if you have to do that. This makes our life a lot simpler and with the Bluetooth technology and having this communicate also with our computer in our office, we can have this data anywhere we are with, our, with that program. So we just came in from the barn and here I am with the TSI-2 which is actually what it's actually called. So this is where our animal production software comes into play and we're going to transfer information um, to the computer. Um, so right now I can go into our options here and our session of what we did today with, on the handling system. Um, I can go in to, to select that information and it brings up all the information we just did. So we just did live weights on all the, on the U group. Um, so that's all the female sheep that we had in that one group and all their life data. Finally, let's take a look at a GPS tractor. A typical day on our farm, we milk 200 cows and we farm about a thousand acres. So there's not really any sort of a typical day on the farm. So basically a GPS tractor is a tractor that has a, a guidance system in it. 
So what the tractor can do, it can steer itself and it can track its uh, way across the field. Basically what it does, it sets up a curve and it follows the curve the entire way across the field. So we use that for doing all the precision uh, work on the field that we do. The way that it's made it probably the easiest for me on the farm is I've been able to delegate a lot of the work that I used to have to do myself because I was so concerned about uh, making sure the work was done right and precisely. Now I have the ability to train the other employees to use the GPS on the farm and they can set the tractors up. The biggest way that it would be different if we didn't have GPS on the farm is you're going back to doing a lot of guesswork. And the, the beautiful part about this, like when we used to spread fertilizer, we used to have to wait till the grass was high enough so you'd be able to see your tracks of where you've already spread. Now, the day that you cut the grass off, if we get rain the next day, we can go on and spread our fertilizer right away because we don't need to follow tracks anymore. We just punch it in the, we pull into the field. Like we have a, every field on the farm has a name and a number. So you pull into the field, you punch the number in and the track's already there. You just pull in, start spreading and uh, you don't have to worry about waiting for certain times or waiting for crops to be at certain stages, you can apply at any time. It also maps everything that's already been done. So if we got three quarters of the way across the field and we ran out of fertilizer and had to go home and refill, you can map what's already done. So it puts a track on your GPS to show you exactly what's already been covered and what hasn't. There's no real typical day on our farm. Uh, every day is different and that's the best part about farming and what I love about it is the fact that Whenever you wake up in the morning, you never really know what you're going to have to face or, or what, uh, what challenges are going to present themselves. It's just figuring out a way to handle them and deal with them the best that you can and, and uh, keep on working. For me, the best part about being a dairy farmer is, well, you're your own boss. Uh, I enjoy working with animals. You're providing a service, providing uh, you know, top quality uh, food for, for the communities. And I just, like I said, I just enjoy the part, especially the animals. Working with the animals is, is the best part for me. So as you can tell from that video, there are a lot of different technologies being used on farms in this province. And you might also notice they were feeding the cows some treats there, so they were getting a little bit of marshmallow treats there, so you, you can tell that they like their snacks just as much as we do. So in the next video we'll be showing you is a dairy farm on Brookfield Road with Nancy Lester. They started robotic milking in February 2021, and it's been amazing to see how this technology has changed their life on the farm. Hi, I'm Nancy Lester with Lester's Dairy Farm, and I'm a sixth generation dairy farm farmer here on Brookfield Road. Um, we milk 250 Holstein cows here, and we just switched to robotic dairy farming which we absolutely love. We started in February and it's been going excellent. And as you can tell with our cows, they're actually, they actually really love it too. She's a little bit smaller, uh, shorter, so I can actually fit the robot so that she is in less space and it'll fit her better. So now we have each individual quarter here and it'll tell us how much milk she's pushing out in each one. So last milking, she put out 3.8 kilograms in this quarter, and you can see in each one what she gives, and it was 14.2 kilograms last uh, milking. And so her days in milk, she's 47 days in milk, so she had a baby 47 days ago, and she averages 3.3 milkings a day. So now we just let the robots do their thing. Well, I grew up on a farm, but ever since I was a little girl, I always wanted to be a teacher. I played school. I know that's strange, but I played school. I loved it. And I always came out to the farm. I didn't like actually have to do work so much. I didn't really know agriculture was an option for me. So I did go to university for a couple of years, but I was always drawn back here to the farm, whether it be at the farm market or here uh, with the cows. So I'm 15 years here now full time and I I still get to be a bit of a teacher here at at the farm because I get groups to come in, I'll get girl guides, I'll get I've had schools. Whoever wants to come here, I'm willing to show them our farm. And 
I guess, too, my dad always told me, he said, you, you find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. So I'm, I'm winning. I look after all of our cow care. Uh, we have a lot of technology here on the farm that we can, um, just like you guys have Fitbits, our cows have what I like to call cow bits. These orange tags in their ears here, they'll actually tell us their temperatures. It's like a pedometer. It'll tell us if she's ruminating. It'll tell us uh, how, much, how active she is and how much she eats. So um, I look at a lot of charts. I'm at the computer a lot more. And I have seven charts of information that I look at every day to check on my cows and make sure that they're the most happy and healthy animals that I can have because happy and healthy animals are the only ones that are going to make milk. So uh, we want our cows to be, to be loving life and as you can see behind me if they look like they're chewing gum that means they're chewing their cud and uh, their stomachs are ruminating and life is good. So since we've switched to robotic farming, we can actually access all of the cow's information on our phone. So I can go and clock in her number in my phone and it'll tell me when she was last milked. So every day, twice a day, we usually come through the herd and see if there's anybody that's over 12 hours milking and they'll come up as in the red. So we'll, usually there's an issue for uh, why she's in the red. She might be in heat, she might just be tired, maybe she's not feeling well because the weather's up and down. Uh, so we'll come get her and get her up and make her go up to uh, get milked. So uh, we're able to see all this information on our phone. So technology is uh, fantastic for that. Uh, there's a lot more information at our t fingertips that we can avail of. And we can actually catch cows that are getting sick quicker and get them healthier quicker now that we have all this technology at, a, at our fingertips. Um, another role on our my farm actually is we have 25 to 30 cows have babies a month here. We have to feed those calves for two years before they can have a baby and before they make milk. So um, it's I love spending time with the calves. It's um, it's very rewarding. Uh, just like you or I, cows can get sick the same way we can. And when you know that you've helped an animal come back and be happy and healthy. It's just so rewarding. What I enjoy most about working with in the agriculture industry, it's very rewarding. There's no other profession that's like this. But on the farm here, um, my favorite, I, I, every day we go into lunch at mom's and it's the only time that myself, mom, dad, and my brother can have a chat about what's going on because it's the only time we're ever really together. And I had a cow in the morning that wasn't feeling well. She was low on her calcium. so. We were able to treat her and within an hour she was up and back to herself and when I see the cow stood up I just had the biggest smile on my face and I was just like this is why I do what I do like this I'm able to help these cows and with helping these cows I'm able to produce food for people. The skills you need to work in agriculture there's a wide range of them which is um, you're going to learn a lot of them too but you need to be able to work in a fast-paced, sometimes high-stressed environment. Uh, you're with animals here on our farm, so you need to be, you need to know how to walk amongst them. Um, you have to be a jack of all trades. I do everything from manual la labor of sweating, pushing some poop down the drain, to uh, sitting at a computer and just my neck is hurting because I've sat here too long. <laughs> so uh, there's lots of things that you, you need to know how to do, but it's, um, it's very rewarding. So, and and I get to, I'm still learning how to do things. I don't know how to drive the harvester yet. That might come in 10 years, maybe not. <laughs> you don't even need to be a farmer to get into the agriculture industry. There's just so many opportunities to go to work in agriculture. Um, every Thursday our veterinarians come here and we go through our, all of our herd health here and make sure our cows are, are healthy. Uh, our milk truck comes every other day. Uh, there's a heavy equipment operator. There's um, hoof trimmers. There's nutritionists that all come here just to our farm. So it's a very large industry. So there's so many opportunities and we go up to, we drop off blood samples to the lab up at the agricultural building. So there's just so much. So just, just go and take your time and look in to see what avenues there are. There's lots of different types of work that might suit you. What I would say to somebody that wants to get into the agriculture industry is go for it. 
Uh, there's lots of help around that can uh, advise you on anything you need to know. Um, it can be very intimidating where it is supposed to be, or it was, sorry, known as a more of a male dominant occupation. Um, I've worked here, I've been on the farm my whole life. My mom's been on the farm her, her whole life. She's milked cows. She now does the bulk of the book work. Um, I'd say go for it and just use all the resources around you. There's so much help. Government is a big help. Um, come to farms. You can come get a job on a farm like this in the summers, after school, and come and see if you like this type of career and see if it's for you. Because it's not for everyone, but you've got to take the plunge and go and see if you like to do it. Thank you so much, Nancy Lester, for showing us around your farm. Seeing the robots in action is pretty cool, and it's funny how they have to come up for a little treat, so they try to come up more often than they're supposed to, but the computers won't let them. So next, we're going to be showing a video about careers in agriculture. And you might not know this, but one in eight careers in Canada is in the agriculture and food sectors. So there's endless opportunities for careers in agriculture, especially here in this province. So we're gonna learn a little bit more about different careers available in the agriculture sector. So, you'll be graduating soon. What are you planning on doing for a career? A nurse? A teacher? A biologist? How about a career in agriculture? Well, farming is a good choice, but a career in agriculture involves farmers and many other professionals. To get food from the farm to families' tables takes many people with many different skills. There's lots to choose from. You can be a soil and plant scientist, animal care specialist, nutrition management specialist, horticulturalist, or a truck driver, just to name a few. Did you know that one in eight jobs in Canada is in the agricultural sector? That's right, one in eight. That makes agriculture the third largest employer in Canada. So, what do you think? Sounds interesting, right? Well, here's five good reasons why a career in agriculture could be right for you. Diverse career selection. The agricultural industry is more than farming. There is an incredible variety of career options waiting for you. Employment opportunities are growing. Consumer demand is steadily increasing. The need to feed is a challenge everywhere in the world. This translates to lots of choices and opportunities for you. Competitive wages. Working in an industry that will always be a priority around the world, chances are you'll make a very good wage throughout your working life. Demand is worldwide. Everyone needs to eat to survive, so a career in agriculture means you can literally work anywhere. You can stay at home or apply your trade in any far corner of the globe. Technical innovation. Farmers need to grow food more efficiently and ensure safe quality products. Technology will play a big part in the future of agriculture. Yeah, the day is gone when you can actually just farm a farm. You know, you get a piece of land and you think that you can farm it. Um, you have an idea and you can grow many different things, but you need your extension services. So, for example, you need somebody who's going to do your soil samples and test your soils to make sure they're right, you know, in the spring and then perhaps in the fall. You need extension services for your pests to see which pests are in the area and what you can do to, you know, mitigate the risks of losing a crop. You need your vet uh, services to come to the farm in case you have a sick animal or, or you know something like that. It's larger, it's more global, yields are important, we have the world feed. I'd, uh, I would tell a high school student if they're interested in agriculture, trying to get them interested in agriculture, that uh, there's a lot more to agriculture than just farming. There's uh, government jobs, uh, there's research jobs, there's feed sales rep jobs, um, all that contribute to the farmer just as much as farming itself. Between 2011 and 2020, 38% of jobs in Canadian agricultural industry will be unfilled. Wow. That's a lot of opportunities in a variety of fields. Um, so in order, if you want to get involved uh, with animal health and making sure that the animals are healthy and happy, there are more than just veterinary, veterinarians that do that. We also have um, technicians, veterinary technicians employed with us. Um, that would be the equivalent of a nurse in human medicine. So they go out and do treatments on the cattle um, or sheep or goats uh, as per the veterinarian's instructions and they will help with the maintenance of the animals from time to time. And by 2022, there will be an estimated 74,000 job opportunities in Canadian agriculture. So think about it. Talk to your guidance counselor. Check out what universities and colleges are offering and go for it. It's your life. 
So as you can tell from that video, there are a lot of different careers in the agriculture and food sector. So if you're looking to learn more about careers in agriculture, you can contact us or look at www.aitcnl.ca. Thank you for joining us today with Agriculture in the Classroom, Newfoundland and Labrador. So Agriculture in the Classroom, Newfoundland and Labrador is intended to connect youth with agriculture and raise their awareness about where their food comes from, the impact it has on the environment, and how they can get involved in agriculture industry. Agriculture in the Classroom is always looking for volunteers to help out in classrooms across the province. So if you want to help volunteer, you can look us up at aitcnl.ca. Be sure to join us next time for Agriculture in the Classroom, Newfoundland and Labrador. is brought to you by Ignite TV.